In this video, we provide a very brief introduction to the Boltzmann energy distribution. Right, so let's think about how uh, energy can be deposited in molecules. And we're going to take a very simple molecule, like say carbon monoxide, uh, which has a Lewis dot structure that looks like this. Right, so our goal then is to envision how uh, if you add energy to this molecule, you know, what are the degrees of freedom that can be excited, that, that can absorb that energy that you're supplying to that carbon monoxide molecule? Well, there's various, right? So for one, you can say that uh, 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 if this is a molecule that is a gas phase, right? So the idea is that if you apply some energy to it, then that molecule can actually move faster, right? So there's something that is called a translational uh, degrees of freedoms. Uh, degrees of freedom that, that uh, again make this molecule move faster if you add some energy to it. Okay, so that is one way for you to transfer energy to a molecule and for the molecule to absorb that energy. But there's more. Uh, another way to uh, for this molecule to absorb energy is to actually vibrate more, right? So uh, there's something that is called the vibrational degrees of freedom. In this particular case, there's actually only one vibrational degree of freedom, which is for uh, that CO uh, to stretch, okay, with larger amplitude if you have a lot of vibrational energy, or a smaller amplitude if you have a lower vibrational energy. All right, more uh, ways for this molecule to absorb energy. You can actually also rotate, right, so there's rotational degrees of freedom, where this molecule, when you add some energy to it, it will actually rotate with a larger angular momentum, and finally, uh, the one that is, uh, that is left here would be an electronic excitation, right? So uh, when you draw the molecular orbital diagram for this molecule, there's electrons placed in, in the orbitals. But if you add energy to those electrons, those electrons can actually be promoted to high energy orbitals. That would be another way for this molecule to absorb energy uh, and interact with the, with, the with the environment in that way. All right, so uh, something that is important for us to realize is that when you think about molecules, right, the way that these molecules absorb energy is not in a continuous fashion, but is in a discrete fashion, okay? And that is uh, a consequence of the quantum mechanical behavior of really small particles like molecules, right? So the idea here is that when you're transferring energy to this molecule and that molecule is absorbing energy, the amounts of energy that the molecule absorbs, uh, absorb, they are actually not continuous. They cannot be any random value. They're actually well-defined values, right? So, uh, and again, that, that is just a, a consequence of the quantum nature of this molecule. Let's try to explain this a little bit better using the vibrational degree of freedom, right? So suppose that you actually have here that you can deposit energy into that uh, stretch of that uh, CO bond. Right. So the way that we think about this uh, in the quantum mechanical uh, sense is as follows. You can have that uh, uh, when you examine the vibrational degrees of freedom of this molecule, you have something that are called vibrational energy states, which are simply the ways that this molecule has to vibrate. Okay, so uh, uh, this is kind of the first way to vibrate, which we're going to call the states uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. And the only thing that this means is that, well, if you have no energy at all in that molecule, that molecule will be in the 0 vibrational state. Okay, but if you add some energy to that molecule, you might actually have enough energy to go to the V1 vibrational state, which means that that molecule will vibrate with larger uh, amplitude, right, so with uh, larger turning points, but if you have more energy, then you might be able to get it to two, which means that the turning points of that vibration will be even further apart, and the outer will be further apart, and the inner turning point will be closer together, and so forth. Okay, but the key is, is this, right, suppose that you have your molecule in the zero state, all right, notice that uh, that molecule, uh, when you transfer energy to it, it cannot go to any arbitrary level of vibrational excitation it wants. Instead, it's forced to go either here, or there, or there, or there, but never in between. 
Okay, so this is what we call that, uh, this is why we say that the energy is not continuous at the quantum level, it's actually discrete, right? So this molecule can either have that vibrational energy, or this one, or this one, but nothing in between, okay? All right, so uh, there's actually ways to couple this to uh, temperature, right? So now we're going to move beyond just one molecule, and we're going to consider a collection of molecules, right? So let's assume that we actually have maybe six molecules. And if you are uh, at zero Kelvin, that means that there's no energy around, no thermal energy around that that molecule can absorb, then what that means is that, well, all six molecules will actually be in the lowest possible vibrational state that they can, right? There's, there's no energy around for them to be promoted to have a larger excitation. Okay, but now we are going to put this bath of molecules, uh, or this, this sample of molecules, in a bath with some temperature, say, suppose that this is maybe room temperature. Right, so this is going to be a temperature that is T1 larger than 0 Kelvin. In that case, what that, what that means is that, well, some of these molecules might be able to absorb the thermal energy that you have around and then be promoted to one of these excited states, right? So one of the possibilities would be that uh, you would have here three, four, all right, so maybe five molecules in the ground state, right, the lowest energy vibration state, and then one molecule in the excited state. Okay, so that's what happens. Uh, that's uh, one of the ways uh, where you can absorb energy uh, in this molecule when you have a thermal uh, energy larger than zero Kelvin. But of course, you can think about perhaps uh, having a larger temperature, T2 larger than T1, where maybe the possibility would be something like this. If I draw here these five states, right, you might have here one, two, three, four, but then here you will have two, or there's many other ways uh, for those molecules to be arranged. Maybe you actually have four, one, and one, or maybe you have three, two, and one, depending on what the temperature is. Okay, so this is essentially uh, how molecules can absorb energy. Here we're just reviewing the case of vibrational energy, but something similar would happen for electronic, translational, and rotational. All right, so there's actually a way to quantify exactly how this uh, distribution of states is uh, with the Boltzmann energy distribution, and this is actually fairly straightforward. Okay, it turns out that you can calculate how many molecules you have in a state, what we're going to call 1, versus a state that we're going to call 0, simply as uh, e to the difference in e minus the difference in energy between that state 0 and that state 1 divided over RT. This is what we call the Boltzmann energy distribution. Okay, so let's see how that works. Notice that this energy will be E0, and the energy of that state will be E1, okay? So if you want to calculate at a, partic a particular temperature how many molecules you have in 1 versus how many molecules you have in 0, the only thing that you have to do is just take the difference between the energies of those two states, that is this delta E from 0 to 1, divide over RT, change the sign, uh, exponential of that, and that is the ratio of populations between those two states. Okay, so how many molecules you have in N1 versus how many molecules you have in N0. Okay, notice that if the temperature is zero, then what you have here is E to the minus infinity, right, so uh, that gives you a zero value. Okay, and that means that there's zero molecules in one and all of the molecules are in zero. Right, uh, but if you have a temperature that is different than one, then you will have numbers that are uh, uh, increasingly larger, okay, and so forth. Okay, now for, uh, you can then uh, uh, try to figure out what would be the case for infinite temperature, right? So suppose that you apply a huge amount of temperature uh, uh, to, this, to this sample. Well, if you make temperature infinity, then what you have here will be e to the zero, which is one, and what that means is that you will have exactly the same amount of molecules in the first excited state, and in the zero, actually, all of the states will be equally pop populated. Okay, so that's what uh, will happen at, at high temperatures. Now, a note about units here, which are important. There's actually two versions of this expression. This is the one that we call per mole. And this is going to be exactly the same expression, but in a way 
that you can uh, apply it to a per particle basis, right? So the different scenario between zero and one, and here you'll have a different constant, which is going to be k sub b, that is Boltzmann constant times t, right? And this is the one that we call per particle. Okay. Both equations give you exactly the same result, okay, but the units are different in each one of them. This difference in energy right here will simply be joules. And this difference in energy right here will be joules per mole. And these are two different ways to measure the difference in energy between these two uh, states, okay? Uh, notice that then the only difference that we have right here is that uh, there you will have R and here you have K sub B. Okay, but those two are related as well. K sub B is simply R over Avogadro's number. And notice how beautifully the units work out, right? Uh, R in the SA system will be joules per mole per Kelvin. But if you divide this over uh, Avogadro's number, which is per mole, then what you get right here is that this is simply joules per Kelvin. Okay, so again, that's the only difference. This will be R, uh, which we know, 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. This is K sub B, which the, the number is known, right? 831 joules per mole Kelvin divided over Avogadro's number. This is going to be a very small number, 1.38, 10, to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. Okay? All right, so again, you get to choose whatever expression of these ones uh, you want, but you have to use the units correctly. So if the problem is providing units of joules per mole for this difference in energy uh, in the statement, right, so you would like to use this expression where you divide over R, which is on a per mole basis as well, so that the, all of the units cancel out. However, if the problem is providing you the energy in units of simply joules, right, so a per particle basis, then you're better served by using here Boltzmann constant, which is in a per particle uh, a constant, this is joules per Kelvin, and then the units cancel out. Really the best way to uh, figure this out is to always write units as you're uh, punching in numbers in problems to see if you actually have that they cancel out, like, like in this problem, right, so notice that this exponent should have no units whatever, because in the end, Right, that is that uh, the ratio of populations does not have any unit either. Right, is the number of molecules that you have in N1 versus the number of molecules that you have in N0. Okay. Now to wrap up this video, notice that we could actually apply this to any two states. Here we've chosen N1 over N0, but we could actually also calculate N2 versus N0 or N4 versus N2. Right? The only thing that ch changes here is then this subscript right here and the difference in energy between the states that are involved. Okay, so uh, uh, this material is going to be more important as we move on to quantum mechanics in the second semester of this course. Okay, but it's also in important to uh, talk about it here as we're introducing fundamentals uh, to thermodynamics because uh, this provides kind of a quantum version of how uh, energy is absorbed in molecules and again, energy transformation is something that is really the body of thermodynamics, which is what we're going to be focusing on in this earlier uh, uh, part of the semester.